Happy Tuesday, print fam. Welcome back to the print shop. My name's Darren. Today, I'm gonna show you step by step what I do for business cards. Part of the reason behind this is so that I have a reference video if I decide to hire someone, and two, it might be helpful. Um, so we are, I'm not gonna show you the design process because how you do it is different. I will say that I use a 0.125 or a 1 8 inch bleed all the way around, um, which is a quarter, basically. So my business cards are three and a half by two. The artboard is 3.75 by 2.25, and then they're cut down to three and a half by two. So again, not gonna show you the design, I'm gonna show you from putting it in Fiery Command Workstation to putting it in the box. Other than that, today we're gonna to do some large format printing, so look forward to some tablets. Hello everyone, as I'm sure you guys know, um, we're about two weeks behind on vlogs. Like, the vlog you're seeing today was recorded two weeks ago. Um, so, it is gonna be Darren recording a computer with his phone however we have discussed it in the future he will be using a screen recording software uh, and just syncing his audio uh, and then i'll just combine them so the next two week cycle will be uh captures for computers and etc should be a little bit better but hang in there you got two more weeks so this program is called fiery command workstation i have this on my primary desktop as well as the Fiery itself. Let's shrink it so it actually fits in here. Ooh, that's so tiny. Um, you can have multiple servers hooked up. So if you have multiple printers, you can connect to all of them at once. I only have one printer, so I just have it here. I've already imported the jobs. To do that, you just click the import button or you can open up File Explorer and drag and drop them into here. Um, so that's kind of step one is get the file in here. I try to name the files specifically for the job. So I give them their PO number, I give them their quantity and then the paper that they're being printed on just to make it really easy to reference in here. So once I have the file in here, I right click it and I go down to impose, which you guys can't see. So let me shift this up here, right click impose. Impose is an add-on feature, so you do have to have a license for it. My printer purchase came with that license. It was a demo um, printer, so it had the license. You can always upgrade or purchase it after the fact, but Impose is awesome. So click Impose, it's gonna bring up the Impose screen. So from here, this is where you can set that you want it to be getting up, that you want it to be a specific size, this, that, and the other. But I've already created templates, which you can't see, there we go. So I've created templates. So I have them here, I have them kind of labeled what they are. Um, the number is the barcode number associated with the Duplo. And I put the size that they are, this is the finished size, not the size with the bleed. And then the size of paper and how many up, whether it's double-sided or single-sided. So in this case, we're doing business cards, 21 up, double-sided, 12 by 18. So it's automatically going to lay out the file for me. It's going to put the barcode, the registration mark, all that fun stuff. I can come here and modify the settings if I need to, but I don't have to. In most cases, I don't. I go ahead and just click the X. It asks me if I want to save it. Um, I had one of you guys reach out and needed help spacing some files. So this is what I did to get you the file is I just flattened it and I moved it to my desktop so I could send it to you. Um, in my case, I just put it in the held queue. So go ahead and hit yes. Another reason why you might want to flatten it is if you're going to send it out to someone else to print, but you're going to do the finishing. Um, that's a way that you can send files off to someone else. So I did it for job number one. I just repeat, repeat the steps for job number two. So now that I have it all set up, then what I do is I double click it, which opens up the property window. 
And in this case, you can also set a paper catalog on the Fiery through the Konica. You can do it through the Fiery, but it's better to do the Konica because it syncs. So in this case, if I look at my file name, I'm printing 500 silk. And so I'm gonna set it to my silk paper. So it automatically sets the paper weight, it sets, sets the paper type, and I'm ready to just push print. I don't go through and modify the quantities because I do that after I do a test print. So I always print one, cut one, and then print the rest. So we'll go ahead and get these printed. So I've got the Duplo turned on. I do not have the computer turned on. So you just need to, in my case, make sure that it says AC registration and barcode. So basically that's, I think the air feeder, the registration mark and the barcode scanning. So I've got the paper in there. We've got the business card stack tray there. So all I do at this point to do the test is push the T. It's gonna do one sheet. I'll check it because these are two different designs. As long as it's good, we'll print the rest. Then check them out. Okay, so both cards looked good. I basically just checked the borders and make sure nothing got cut off and that the spacing looks right. Because one, I don't want to have to change my template and two, I don't want to print all of them and have there be an issue. So now I walk over to the Fiery, connect it to the printer and modify the print queue. Let me show you that. So I double click the job just like I did on my computer, except I double click it here. In this case, we're printing 250. So I need to print 11 more sheets and then just click print, which you can't see right there. So click print and it'll print the 11 sheets. And for the 500, I print 24 sheets. So while this is printing, I get under my table here and get my business card boxes. Boxes that I buy are self-contained, so they don't need any glue or staples or tape to hold them together. So they fold up like that, and then this top folds over, and the sleeves go in to hold them together. When I'm shipping them off, I do put a piece of tape here, and then the label on the top. Because there are two designs, I try to drop my guard. I guess you could say he let his guard down. <laughs> That's exactly what he wanted right? That was, ex that was perfect, thank you. I tried to get him on the cutter because the cutter's slower than the printer. So there is a bunch of empty space because I buy 500 box business card boxes. 500 count business card boxes. So I fill in this space. So usually I'll use, this stuff comes inside of some t-shirts and then I also have the brown craft stuff that comes in packages. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure that I get a piece that fills this in so that during shipping it doesn't shift. Close it up, so tape it if it's being shipped and put a shipping label. If it's not being shipped, I tape a single business card to the top.
Hyperprofam. I'm off to deliver these signs. And as you may have seen, I had some problems with the cutting. My perf cut was too deep. Um, I used my same perf cut that I used for my Prime Gloss Air for the Prime Gloss CP, and it's not the same. Um, I printed six signs. They only needed five. They would have bought six if I would have had them. I ended up ruining one. I was able to salvage the rest. The cutting was a little funky and not perfect, but there are white signs with text on a white background sign, so not that big a deal, and they're temporary. So they do look good, which I'm happy with. So when we get back, we'll go over the numbers, but just wanted to let you know, in my case, I'm in a rush, but make sure you test your perf cuts. Um, but I found the easiest way to install signs with vinyl is to cut out the size of the sign, adhere a little corner or a strip, and then squeegee the whole thing on. I'm probably gonna see if I can find like a 20 inch squeegee, so that way I can just push the whole thing. I do have a big squeegee that's like four and a half feet, or four feet or something, but that's just a little too big for this application. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe find one that's 20 inches or 24 inches. That would be ideal for this thing. So on with the deliveries. End of the post office. All right, it has been a busy one. We've run the latex for about three hours today using about 200 milliliters of ink, running about 200 square feet of media. I need to now take all of the things that I printed. This morning, you saw me apply some social distancing, stay of six feet apart signs. I'm doing more of that today. These are for um, a military nonprofit that they allow people to make donations and as part of that donation they can get a sign. So it's kind of a fun group to be a part of. We're doing them for a super, super cheap deal. Like Robert is selling them for <laughs> really cheap. It's frankly not worth doing, but it's a good cause. Um, I think right now we have about 40 signs total. I printed 30 right now because those are the ones that we have approved. I'm um, still waiting for H stakes. Those are on back order. Hopefully they'll be here. People are hoping to get the signs Friday and or they're fire. Got a phone call. Anyway, people are hoping to get the signs either Friday or shipped Friday, but the H stakes aren't here. So hopefully um, the supplier said that they were thinking they would have them this week. So hopefully that's the case, but I'm going to get applying and we'll see what else we're going to do today. It's already six, so don't know how much longer I'm going to work. I'm tired. Iron print fame. It's time to call it a night. Got seven of those signs applied. Still a stack more to do. So that's what we get to look forward to tomorrow. So I'll make sure I do some time lapse of it. In the meantime, if you have any questions about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, etc., leave those questions down in the comments. Thanks, Cam, for hitting the video. Really appreciate you. If you guys want to support the channel, you can do so with Patreon, Amazon affiliate links, all that fun stuff. But the biggest appreciation right now would be helping me hit a thousand subs. So if you know anyone that likes printing, if you've enjoyed the content and haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. 
it would mean a lot that little action so thank you as always though just for watching we appreciate you being here make sure to come back tomorrow so you can see more printing stuff i'll probably show you my idea for the shop so far it's a little crazy but it'll be fun thanks for watching Prime. see you tomorrow Huge shout out to our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash TTMS. All right, all of you who stayed to the end, here's the little bonus section. I haven't fully decided everything here and all of the items I just used SketchUp's 3D warehouse thing to get. So some of them are not like the actual item, but for the most part, it works. So here in the back of the shop, we've got a four by eight table. We've got the HP Latex, which this is really like an Epson. And this is really like a scanner or something, but this represents the printer. This represents the cutter the embroidery machine and the heat press. Um, so I just have those all sized there. This room is just here. It kind of represents a potential bathroom as well as where the stairs would be to go to the upstairs apartment. I do want access kind of to the bathroom and the stairs from the office in case it is like office space rather than apartment. And then if we turn this direction, we've got kind of the HP, not the HP, the production printing. So we've got paper storage here. We've got a heat or a drill press to represent the corner punch. Um, this is sized as a Morgana digifold because that's really what I'm hoping to get. We've got the Konica, which this is a Konica, just not mine. So I stretched it to be the same length as mine. And then this is a Duplo, but this is the, I think 646, and so I just shrunk it to be the 616. Again, with a nice four by eight workbench. Now, what I don't have that I do have in this kind of sketch is a flatbed cutter. So this is um, representing the size and space of the Suma F1612, I believe is the model number. And then this is representing the um, R1000. So the width and length of it include the outfeed table. So in reality, it would kind of jut in and whatnot. So this is kind of potentially what I'm thinking, even though right now, I wouldn't have these two machines. I don't have the Morgana and I haven't put like my computer anywhere. So just kind of a, this is a starting point. So this building is 30 feet wide, 40 feet deep. But let me know what you think. Appreciate any feedback.